One of the most useful features of the Pocket NC V250 is its ability to operate in all five axes simultaneously. Combined with the tools available within Fusion 360, that allows for some interesting machining strategies. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how I used my Pocket NC V250 and Fusion 360 to engrave the MJBOTS logo onto the outside of the QDD100 Beta Edition Quasi Direct Drive servos. At the outset, let me say this video is purely my opinion and experience. I'm in no way sponsored by any company mentioned here. I just use their products and like or dislike them on their merits. And last, before I get started, if you like these videos, click like or subscribe. I've been developing the QDD100 servo to support dynamic robotic applications where high torque, high speed, and low reflected inertia are important, like in legged robots. For the beta edition servos I'm selling, I decided to give them a little bit of extra special look and feel by engraving the outer cylindrical service with the MBHA bots logo. This needs at least a rotary axis. The V250 with its five axes is up to the challenge. Let's get started in Fusion 360 in the design workspace. For this project, we'll first need a precise solid model of the part to engrave and some way of holding it in the pocket NC. This part was originally designed in Fusion 360, so the model I'm starting with is as accurate as I'll get. Now, to place a pattern, we'll first create some sketch planes on either side of the part. Then we'll make a sketch to hold the unprojected artwork and place it on a plane. After that, we need to get the pattern we would like to grave into Fusion 360. For vector artwork, insert SVG is a reasonable choice, as most vector art can be exported to SVG in some way. I have the MJBOTS logo in that form already, so that was a no-brainer. At this point, since this feature is purely aesthetic, I just eyeball the size and position by nudging things around. The mechanism I'll be using is project onto curved surface. To make this work, we need yet another sketch, on the same plane as before, although it won't end up actually being on the plane. Then we select project and then proceed to highlight each of the curves we want to project. Double clicking gets each segment and everything connected to it. Then we pick faces, which lets us select the curve to project onto, in our case, the cylinder. Finally, we use the along vector method and select the normal axis. Note this isn't a perfect projection technique. Ideally, we'd like to wrap the logo around the cylinder rather than projecting it onto the cylindrical surface. But in this case, the logo is small enough that the distortion isn't that big of a problem. That projection actually generates points on every surface along the normal vector, which in our case includes a mirror image on the reverse side of the cylinder. While I do want an engraving on the other side, I don't want a mirrored one. So we'll just delete those points by selecting them and pressing the delete key. With that done, we'll finish that sketch and repeat the process for the other side. I don't care if the two sides are exactly identical, so I'll just reinsert the SVG and manually align things to be pretty close. We have to do the exact same dance as before to create a second sketch to hold the projected points, project them, and then delete the mirror image that gets projected on the opposite side. And I'll give some useful names to our sketches so we don't forget which things are what. With the logo projected, the next step is to get this mounted into the Pocket NC. To do that, I have a 3D printed fixture to hold the part to the V250 that I used initially to machine some prototypes to the part. I modeled this in Fusion 360, so we'll just add it using Insert Derive. The fixture itself is just 3D printed PETG. Since the V250 can't apply all that much cutting force, 3D printed fixtures are often sufficient for work holding odd shapes. We'll bolt one side of this fixture to the part to engrave. I'll just use a Fusion 360 joint to ensure that registration. The other side is designed to bolt using M3 bolts to a 120mm 8 bolt mounting pattern. This fits a B table expander I commonly use on the Pocket NC. This expander makes it easier to hold larger parts as dedicated fixtures can bolt to the part in question, then bolt down to the expander plate. I have the Pocket NC with that B-table expander set up as a separate model in Fusion 360 for easy use, so I'll once again use Insert Into Current Design to add it here. 
Then I'll connect up that model to our fixture using a joint. Now we have the CAD part ready to go with the logos where we want them. Next, we'll move to the manufacturer workspace to do our cam. First, we need to create our setup. For this, things are relatively straightforward because of the V250 model I already imported. We'll first pick the WCX axes, which for the PNC are Z facing the spindle and Y up. My V250 model has a sketch where the calibrated origin point of my machine is already entered, so we have the WCS origin ready to go. Since the V250 doesn't have a great way to do any probing, we typically hard reference workpieces to the origin point, so it's important to have that set up correctly. For stock, we'll just use the model, as we're not planning on using any operations that actually care where the stock is. Then we'll give a more reasonable name to the setup and select the models to designate as the fixture. Next up, let's look at the tool library. The engraving tool I'm using here is a 0.6 millimeter ball end mill from OSG. It has a 4 millimeter shank, which requires using the 4 millimeter collet on the V250. It doesn't matter for this operation, but in general I try to do as much as I can on the V250 with the 4 millimeter collet because it seems to give better pullout resistance. For feeds and speeds, these are the values I found that worked with this tool engraving 6061 before although I can't say I had to experiment very much before I got to something I was happy with. With a setup in place and a tool ready, we'll create the tool pass. First we'll make the logo visible, then we'll activate the multi-axis contour tool path using the engraving tool we just looked at. For most operations with a pocket and C, you need to manually select your tool orientation. For these, we'll put the Z axis in line with the engraved side. Then, in the Geometry tab, we'll pick the portion of the curve we want to handle in this toolpath. I'll do only a portion of the logo to make it easier to compensate for slight registration errors later. Nothing needs to change on the Heights tab. Finally, in Passes, we'll be using the Axial Stock to Leave to control how deep the engraving goes. I'll choose an initial value of minus 0.05 millimeters, or about two thousandths. We'll adjust that as necessary after doing a test cut. With that toolpath ready, we'll duplicate it for the remainder of the logo on the first side, then twice again for the logo on the other side. Before running this, we'll verify it in the Fusion 360 simulator to look for any obvious problems. It isn't perfect for 5-axis work, but it is a good start. I'll enable toolpath so we can see where things ended up. And there, sure enough, is a problem and that my second half of the logo appears to be recutting the first half again. The second half seems fine. Let's go back and fix that first half by selecting the correct curves. Now let's go and simulate again to verify that resolved things. Yep, that looks good now. With our tool paths ready, it is time to get them onto the pocket NC. I'll select post process from the right click menu. For now I'll do the entire program in one go. In this dialog, I'll make sure Pocket NC is selected, I'll pick an output directory, and the V250 machine type. Now that we have posted files, we can use the Pocket NC simulator at sim.pocketnc.com to do a final check. This will take into account the actual machine travel rate limits, as well as the transitions between different tool orientations. We just upload the G-code here, stop the simulation to select V250, then hit Run. To be more accurate, we could enter the tool offset as measured on the device. That won't be a problem for this toolpath, but if you're concerned about your stickout, putting in the right value will let you know if you would run out of z-axis travel. Then to upload, we go to the Pocket NC web interface, select this button, pick our file, and hit go. At the Pocket NC, we'll install the Btable expander. Then we'll bolt our stock onto the fixture. And then mount the fixture onto the B-table expander. At this point we're ready to cut, so let's give it a go. Sure enough, the very left side of the first logo gets into the material a tiny bit. The right side, not so much. The second logo only makes contact a tiny bit, 
on that final T and S. We'll go back to F360 and fix that up. Since the first section was the deepest, we'll only take a little bit more material away, dropping from minus 0.05 millimeters to minus 0.1 millimeters. The second half will do a full 0.1 millimeter less, down to minus 0.15 millimeter, and the same for the first half of the second logo. The second half of the second logo had made a little contact, but not as much as the first did, so we'll take it down to minus 0.12 millimeter. We'll post that, upload it to the Pocket NC, and give it another shot. Here we go, recutting over the first attempt. Looks like we did a pretty good job with the depth through all the parts of the logo on both sides now. Let's take that off the fixture and see how it looks. Not too bad. That's it. Thanks for watching. As before, if you want to see more videos from me and support this channel, you can click the like button and subscribe.